The objective today is to describe the redundancy of routing between two points on the internet. So this lesson is all about routers. Um, think R for redundancy, R for routers. A router is a computer designed to receive and redirect packets of information based upon the addressing information. That is an IP address um, contained in the packet. Routers will either deliver packet to its final destination or forward it to one of several other routers it is connected to. Think right share. What is the difference between a packet and data? If you need to use the picture to help, definitely go for it. So why would data need a time to live? I'm looking at this diagram of TCP IP packets. I see you have a version number, length, type of service. Um, I'm just looking at all these different things and then I notice time to live. Why would somebody send out information and then expect that information to somehow just disappear after its time to live period is over? Why would that be helpful to anyone? So a uh, much simpler diagram here to look at to wrap your mind around uh, what's being sent um, through these routers. You have a header, you have a payload, and a trailer. By monitoring current network conditions, a router can determine which of these will allow the data to reach its destination fastest. Think right share. What can a router do to help network conditions? There will often be redundant paths between two locations on the internet, and so if one path is experiencing traffic or otherwise out of service, additional paths will be available. This redundancy makes the internet more reliable and also helps the internet to scale, accommodating new users and routers as they are connected to the system. So based on that paragraph, why is redundancy helpful? Why have several paths to the same location? Routing on the internet also mirrors routing in the postal network in that there are multiple ways that a message can travel from sender to receiver in response to conditions in the network. So for a letter in the mail, this might mean a mail person chooses a different route uh, through a city in response to construction. Uh, for a message on the internet, this means traveling to different routers based on the traffic of bits traveling across the network. So now I ask you, who owns the internet? When we're thinking about messages being um, sent from one place to the other, I thought that would be a great question to ask. The answer, no one and everyone. So maybe a better question than the one I just asked would be, who has the most servers? So when you're on the internet, all you're doing is going to a server and asking for information from that server. And just like... Um, messages have redundant paths to travel to and from. There are also redundant information kept on these servers spread out across the world. Um, think about this, companies offer hosting and they charge the owner slash creator of these websites uh, a fee for that hosting of data. So let's answer the question, who owns the most servers? Well, Microsoft has more than one million servers uh, Facebook has hundreds of thousands of servers. We don't quite know the number there. OVH, 150,000 servers. Akami Technologies, 127. Softlayer, 100,000. And Rackspace. The strong growth of Rackspace Cloud has boosted the total for the San Antonio-based provider to 94,000 as of March uh, 31st, 2013. So this company is um, making uh, quite a lot of progress in a short amount of time. And then don't forget Intel. They have 75,000 servers. And look, there's a lot more companies. But two more I want to touch on before uh, moving past the subject of who owns the most routers. Uh, Amazon. This uh, company runs the world's largest online store, uh, one of the world's largest cloud computing operations as well. Amazon says very little about its data center operations, but we know that it bought $86 million in servers from Rackable in 2008. And it stores 40 billion objects in its S3 storage service. So 2009 analysis by Randy Bias estimates that 40,000 servers are 
are dedicated to running Amazon Web Services, easy too. So um, that's where the hosting comes into play that I was just talking about. Amazon is is growing in that field as well in several other fields. Now we have Google. The search giant's server count has long been the focus of speculation. The company doesn't release numbers, but a recent report from energy expert Jonathan Kumi, or Comey uh, estimated that Google had 900,000 servers based on an ex extrapolation from the data Google provides on its total energy usage. Um, so this is just a, a best guess. Okay, guys, 900,000 servers. And they're just making this guess based on um, the energy Google is paying for. Uh, Google's recently revealed container data center holds more than 45,000 servers, and that's a single facility built in 2005. One place I didn't mention at all would be a server the NSA has or controls, or I'm not quite sure what their relationship could be um, with servers, but just don't forget the NSA. Uh, think right share. What possible reason could exist for Google not to release these server numbers? Or for that matter, any company? Why wouldn't they release how many servers they have and where they have them? Yesterday I recommended this video, so now would be the time to watch um, after that 40 minute mark. Some video notes, uh, the guy talks about cables under the Atlantic and Mediterranean Sea. Uh, these cables are connecting servers across the world. Someone may have been maliciously cutting these lines. Subnet Masks tells the computer what IP addresses are on the network. Uh, so don't quite freak out if you don't know what a subnet mask is. That'll come later. IP address of the router is another thing to consider when looking at IP addresses. A DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. We don't have to use this. We could do this manually, but it's dangerous because your computer would blindly follow uh, where you lead it. So you could easily have IP collisions. Um, there are more reliable ways of hacking than to change your IP address to someone else's. Um, so if that's something, a thought that had just crossed your mind, um, that would be a bit of a waste of time for you. And in 1990s, the cookies are going to end us all concept was big, but not anymore. And if you don't know what a cookie is, just Google cookie in computing terms. So just like the post office, uh, they use a standardized zip code and addresses. The internet uses a standardized numeric addressing system called Internet Protocol to route messages to specific locations. The numeric IP addresses have a structure and hierarchy in much the same way that the telephone numbers have a structure and a hierarchy, with country uh, coming first and in area codes um, after that, uh, state area codes that is. So I say that so you keep in mind that the routers are using this IP information. Think right share what is meant by structure and hierarchy. So in other words, how are IP addresses like telephone numbers? Okay, vocabulary, network redundancy, having multiple backups to ensure reliability during cases of high usage or failure. Think back to what I was saying about multiple servers um, having the same data on them. And then a router is a type of computer that forwards data across a network. DOL, describe how redundancy happens and why there would be a need for this redundancy in networking.